There you go. Hello, this is Mike Lanier from carshownationals.com. Let's roll podcast. How can I never say that every time? <laughs> and uh, we are here with Jeff Thisted, who's hey guys. from the Hot Rod Power Tour spokesman. Hopefully they're having that still this year, and I won't say that because he gets mad at me. And uh, we're here with Lou Santiago, What's formerly up? from the show Car Fix. Um, it's it's funny because people are like, where's Lou? I've seen that. Uh, people are asking where you are, and uh, so it's pretty funny. But now, we're, now they're going to find out. Yeah, so we're gonna, yeah. We're going to talk about what you're doing, and uh, you can go from there. Jeff's always my main question man here, so he's probably got a few, I bet you. But before, well, before we get wait a minute, before we get started, Jeff, that lamp you have behind you. Yeah. I have two <laughs> like that in my house. Oh, you're just ass. saying that. You're just I saying swear, that. I swear to God. I swear to God. And they're, they got their – my mom bought them 100 years ago. I th Yeah, this is – it's like a hand-me-down that I've had yep. forever, like my chair. And people are like, you got to get a new background. It's like, this is my this is my stuff. Leave me alone. Right. I mean, yeah. I'm not manufactured. I'm at least – as horrible as I am, I may be, I'm at least authentic. So. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I, I hide everything behind me. So <laughs> well, you got, the, you got the logo up there. You got the Car Show Nationals. You got the yeah. Boss Hog Torque Converter. You have all the necessary logo. stuff, right? You have all the necessary yeah. stuff. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> You know, Lou, so, you're on you're on the East Coast, eight yeah. o'clock your time, uh, North Carolina. Am I right? Yes. But you're up now. What was that? You broke up on that one. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Where is your shop? My the shop I'm in now is in Roxboro, North Carolina. It's 24 miles from South Boston, Virginia. So it's right up at the state line. So did you used to be in? Why do I think Florida? That's where that's where they shot Carfix at. That's it. Okay, so that's where they shot that's, that. That's but you're in North part. Carolina because I know. Yeah, your new your new shop is like, uh, it's massive, huge, it's 100, 000 square feet. Wait, what? I, I'm t I'm I'm actually tied to a hundred thousand square foot building. That's wow. massive. Yeah. Massive. I can, I've driven a tractor trailer in it, made a U-turn, and drove out. <laughs> wow. <laughs> now, how there many donuts go. have you done in there? Be honest. None, none yet. None? None yet. Don't worry, yeah. there will be some. There will be some. It's okay. <laughs> okay, yeah. this tractor trailer. Uh, so you you got garage. Tell us about a little bit of your project, your your, uh, your progression. But you okay. you're on a Garage Insider TV now, which right. is your YouTube deal. Right. And you're in this massive warehouse, and I remember we're friends. We chat here and there, and there was this thing that we had chatted about about big rigs, and you're yeah. like Jeff. I'm slamming one right now. It's like, well, <laughs> explain this to me. You're slamming. What do you mean slam a big oh, rig? Okay. So just like you can slam a car, just yeah. like you can bag a car, you can bag a rig. They make, nice. they make front axle setups for airbags. The rear, of course, is airbag. What you, what you can do is you find a car hauler or axle. All right. They make, Dana Spicer makes up to a five inch drop car hauler or axle. <laughs> like when you see when you see like um I, one of the companies is Hanson when you see those guys hauling new cars look at how low the cab is in relation to another truck it's the they the roof is shorter than what it should be but they also run a car, a car hauler axle if I'm not mistaken they do a two a three and a five inch drop so you you can do a car hauler axle and bags and put the bumper on the dirt. And these are functional, not just for looks and show, but no, they're working trucks. They're working trucks with five inch drops. The so reason how does that? Started, well, the reason we see they they run five inch they'll, they'll run a five inch drop with twenty four with twenty two five low pro tires. The reason why they did the such an extreme drop that extreme drop isn't that old, but what it is is this way they can haul like a suburban on the roof, so they still have enough clearance to get under bridges. Oh my God. Okay, yeah. so so they can do that, but how? And this, I guess, this is a non-truck driver question. I sound like a little Miss Frilly, Frilly Pants, but is it? <laughs> how's the ride quality? Are you sacrificing a bunch? Of, it, it's no, got to be. Ride is ride is usually better. What? Yeah, because you're because realistically, you're not changing any of the suspension. Like if you like the car haulers, a lot of your car haulers don't have bags in the front. 
They just don't because they want to eliminate that sway with the car on the roof. So it's just straight leaf springs. It's a, it's a straight axle, so they have the two parallel leaves, and it's set up to ride like it's supposed to. And then you got to remember something else. They have air in the seats. So the seats, yeah. the seats have air ride too. So that, you know, you're still floating as you're going down the road. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. But I thought the tires took up a lot of that with those low profile tires. They do. I hear that those... they do. But I mean, the sidewall is still a good 10 inches. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. It's, all right. Not, it's, it's not like in the car game where you have, you know, a one inch That's... sidewall. It's not like that. Something. That's what I'm thinking exactly. Those, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. No, no, no. It ain't like that. Okay, okay. Let me, okay. Let me see if yeah. I can. Yeah, see what and see what I'm doing is there's a company. Well, let me. I'll just go through the whole. I'll go through the whole thing. <laughs> like this, this truck that I'm that I'm doing it. The wheelbase is two is 270 inches, right? That's from the factory. Now, what I'm going to do is this company called PG Adams out of out of Vermont. They will take your existing rail you cut them you cut them the rail where you know with the whole with all the suspension holes in it you send it to them and they will make a set of rails the length that you need so you only have one joint so you only have one splice in the frame some guys will cut it in, in the middle behind the instead cabin. of how many splices how many splices does the original a lot of have? guys will put two basically okay. you know what let me let me just make it easy let me just make it easy I'm gonna so bust. this is like for car guys. This is like an Art Morrison or a, a Schwartz Performance or Roadster Shop chassis. Or you're modifying. It would be more like clipping. It would be more like clipping the car. Like if you put a an aftermarket front end on it. Yeah. Okay. Of, but see like what you have. Is, front end for your Camaro. Yeah. See what I'm gonna do. This is A. This is B. It's less than time. Drawing, drawing, <laughs> he's, drawing a, he's like Chip Foose right now. He's just drawing the whole thing. <laughs> okay. All right. See, A, if this was the cab here, right? Oh, yeah. Good one. <laughs> Our vertical line is the cab, correct? Yep. What a lot of guys will do is they'll, they won't, they'll just cut, they'll put two cuts in it and put a space in the middle. And then they, okay. they don't have to worry about their suspension holes and all that for the rear suspension. And then they just marry it together. And then they'll put another rail on the inside where you can't see it. What I'm going to do is one cut. I'm going to get this whole piece back here, the length I need it, probably a foot longer, the length I need it. And then I can cut it and all the suspension holes in it are in it and everything. This company, PG Adams, they make rails. That's all they do is make rails for trucks. So I'll send them my piece of rail with all the holes, the suspension holes. Any holes I don't want, I circle, put an X on them, and then they will scan it. They will laser cut all the holes. They'll put the bends in it, make it the thickness I need. The steel is right for DOT and everything. And then I'll take, then I'll take the, when I get it back, I'll do a 22 degree slash cut. 22 on the new rail marry them together it'll be a, it'll be flush i'll marry i'll weld it up and then i'll take the piece of the old rail instead of instead of buying a new piece for the you know to, to double rail it i'll cut the bottom up I'll, I'll cut the bottom of the c channel off so it's just you know an angle iron right like an l yeah yeah an angle iron so then i'll i'll have all the holes i, I can plug weld all the holes on the back and it and it looks like it's that way Huh. And I just, Did you hear that, I'm Mike? It's not an yeah. L, it's an angle iron. <laughs> not an L, it's an yeah. angle iron. I but know now, what an angle iron is. Come on. <laughs> it's, but now, here's now, the, the rails, the rails are made up of, of you know, a, 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 a certain type of steel. So okay. I have to use um, 110, I got it written down, as, um, it's, it's 11080 low hydrogen well uh rod i think it is basically the rod the rod is made for 110,000 tensile strength pull so th so it's it's you know it's it's a it's a high quality rod and then but what i got to do like i got to cut it i have to preheat the rail to 300 degrees when i get ready to weld it marry it together at 300 degrees burn it in and then wrap it in a heat blanket so it can cool how do you uh, preheat it to 300 degrees torch <laughs> oh, there you go. Okay. Uh, <laughs> All right. 
Pardon? Sorry, I'm not a welder. <laughs> we we interviewed a, you know Dwayne Maddox. You guys are welders. Yeah. You're real men. Yeah. Uh, he was yeah, gonna be yeah. at a shop. He was gonna be at a shop maybe today. That's what he told me. Yeah, well, Dwayne was Dwayne Dwayne was supposed to be at the shop. He was gonna yeah. come up this week, but I had some stuff going on that I had to take care of, and it, it kind of it messed yeah. my week up. But yeah. when we get when we do, as a matter of fact, Dwayne Dwayne got me the right the the right welding rod because I got nice. well, I'm migging it, so it's a spool. Because I'm migging it, I decided to go with you know I'm gonna go with that. But I gave him the numbers, and he found me the right the right stuff that I needed. So I've got all oh. that stuff, and then I'm gonna I'll preheat the rails, and we'll make it happen. But I got to get PG Adams because of the Wu Tang beer virus. They are behind, so they said they're gonna start taking new orders. I believe it was June 22nd, so next week. And then, okay. uh, so I'll get the back of the rig tore apart, get it all set up. They'll set up shipping. Give me a quote. We ship it. Boom, and, and you know we're rocking. And then, you know, in 14 days, I'll have a new set of rails for this truck. And, uh, but you're going to see the whole thing. Trust me. You're going to see, we're going to record and, the whole thing. And it's going to be how much longer Process. with these new rails? I'm going, I'm going to, <laughs> okay. I'm going to 300 inch wheelbase. Basically, instead of two, instead of 220? It's 273. 270 to 300. So 30 so inches. 270. I'm sorry, 270. 270 so what, to 300? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so the it. way you measure a rig, the way you measure a rig is this is your front wheel. You yeah. measure from the center of the front wheel to right between the two duels, and that's your yeah. wheelbase. So I'm going from 270 to 300. Nice. Yeah, and it's funny because the the it's a it's a Kenworth. It's a 97 L model. It's got a cat in it. It's got a 10 speed, but. We're gonna we're gonna get a thirteen for it because you know you gotta have a thirteen, and <laughs> if the uh, chip the guy who's the guy who's my my financier for this operation for this whole for the whole thing, it's Chip's truck. His son used to race. His son got out of racing probably ten years ago, and now his you know so the truck's just been sitting at the shop. So I, I you know was sitting there and they did some work on it just because it needed it. And, I, and Chip was walking through the shop. I said, Chip, I got a question for you. He goes, what's that? I said, well, can I stretch the rig? He goes, what's that mean? I said, well, it doesn't mean anything to you. I said, you know, I'm going to make the wheelbase. I'm going to cut it in half and stretch it from 270 to 300 inch. It actually does nothing for you, but you'll be cool. And he kind of looked at me. I said, you'll need a 40-acre field to turn the motherfucker around but you'll be cool. And that's what's important. <laughs> and he looked at me and he goes, what's it going to cost us? It's going to cost about two grand for the rails. He goes, okay. And walked off. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and walked off. I was like, okay, it's a done deal. <laughs> that's fantastic. Yeah. It's yeah. good to have so, friends like that. Right, right. That's where me we and are. Jeff, me and Jeff need a few like that. <laughs> well, trust me, I, you know, huh. it, it's, it's awesome because you know chip is he bought this he got this building and he just called me up two years ago and he said you still want to do your videos i was like yeah so i got these cars that need to be built and i said well can i build some of mine and he said yeah he said come on come up and look at it and uh i went up there he's got a guy that shoots and edits so oh yeah so that's the dream. I go up yeah there and i go up there and as long as i make videos he leaves me alone <laughs> Oh, that's fantastic, yeah. Yeah. And the awesome. videos are at? Yeah, um, on YouTube, Garage Insider TV. There's Right now, there's, I think, 16 up. 16 of them. And they vary in time. Anywhere between two minutes to 10 minutes. They vary in time, just depending on what I'm, on what I'm doing. Right now, I'm doing, I'm not doing a big rig yet because they're, they're having to move some stuff from one building to the other. But uh, I'm doing a, a 69 Chevelle. And I got my Suburban in there because I found out, which I, I never knew this until I started looking around, the old school throttle bodies that GM had, nobody does anything with those. So Summit came on board and they're helping me out with parts. So they sent me an EFI, a Comp Cam's hydraulic roller, just a stock replacement, a set of trick flow heads and a trick flow intake. So I got the front end off of the Suburban to hold all the sheet metal. And I got the heads off, so I'm getting ready to do the head swap, and then I'm going to do the cam swap. What year is the Suburban? 
It's an 83 square body, and then I'm going to wow. lower it, and I got to and I got to build a rear end for it. And I'm thinking about, I'm thinking about. I actually have a gear vendors overdrive in my in my shop at home. Nice. That I got that I got years ago when I was doing muscle car. I got it, and I was going to put it in my dad's truck, but my dad's truck is off the road. Come and totally redo it. So I think I'm going to put that in the suburban behind the turbo 350, and then uh, I'll be rocking. Because it's it's, whoa, 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 whoa. it's a turbo 350. <laughs> yeah, I'm putting the turbo 350 behind it. Why? Because the gear vendors makes it a five speed. Uh... I have a turbo 350, so it's not. I mean, I have one. I built. That's the, so interesting. I, I there, built I mean... my dad's truck, and I just never put it in. Okay. So I mean, it's brand new. It's well, it's a rebuild, I should say. But I mean, it's got all the extra clutches. It's got all the good stuff. Got the shift kit in it. It's all set up. I just, you know, I haven't used it, so why not use it? That's especially you know, if you have the gear vendors. Yeah, the gear vendors is the way to go. I mean, honestly, it, I like them. For an automatic, you can't beat it. You just can't. hundred oh, percent. And I mean, if Jeff Lutz uses it on his stuff, uh, that that I mean, that pretty much solidifies it. It's bomb proof. Yeah, they and and Mike was telling me at gear vendors that they. They put the thing behind like a fifteen hundred horse race car, and that's that's their test pig. That's what I mean. Yeah, Jeff Lutz is he's doing those Pro Street three thousand yeah. horsepower yeah, evil yeah. things. So yeah, those things take yeah, a and beating. he does all that no prep shit. So yeah, that, yeah. That's, yeah. So, exactly. I mean, and dude, they're like the size of a football. They're tiny, you know. I mean, you you would think that they would be bigger than they are, There's, but they're just neat. I, I mean, I, I've I've got one in my other suburban, and I like it. It works, so I can't complain. Yeah. So is your other, your other, you like lowering everything? So is your other Suburban lowered too? Oh, yeah, it's in the dirt. But I'm actually, nice. I actually, I got to fix that one because it came out of Buffalo and it's all rotted out. I got to, I got to fix it. I need to do a body swap on it is what I need to do. Wow. So, and did you see how matter of fact it was about that? Oh, yeah, it's in the dirt. <laughs> <laughs> I lower everything. It's. It is just is what it is. <laughs> I've always wanted to do that, you know. I've, ever since high school, people made fun of me because I always thought cars look so cool lowered, and this was in the they 80s. They are. You know, so, you know, it's still the same thing nowadays. Yeah. Even bigger, probably. <laughs> they, they look so much better when they're low, in my opinion. Yeah. I love it. I, with trucks, usually with a, like a, a K5 Blazer, uh, the first-gen Blazer, or a square body, I see, I like them. Jacked up three to or three to five inches. <laughs> well, you know, when I'm in that kind of altitude, I get dizzy from the lack of oxygen. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. But otherwise, you get stuck if you want to go over anything. Uh, <laughs> you still know how to drive it. You know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> yeah. It's all. You know, when you go when you go over the speed bump, you you you, you do it at an angle. <laughs> That's the thing is that from uh, Power Tour, I wasn't a fan of them, but watching these things, like at the Good Guys events, there's some of the guys with um, uh, they've, they've got the Blazers that are lower. They've got the – and the, the Broncos. They've got yeah. the short little itty-bitty wheelbases drop, slam yeah. down, yeah. and they just motivate. Oh, yeah. They um, run down. Yeah. 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 And they're light in the back. they got no weight in the back at all. Yeah. Um, the thing's just boogie. So I admire them because they are they're super fast. Yeah, I low I lowered a van one time just because. <laughs> oh geez, have you seen have you seen Cotton's new van? Yeah, oh, I, I, that I thing's had gonna a, be sweet. I had a '68 oh, van that was pro streeted. You did? Oh, nice. yeah, okay. I, had a, I had a '68 Chevy van that was pro streeted. I got a six. It was a window one. I've got a '68 in the yard now. That's a panel. That's Chevy. So you got a, you got a Chevelle in there. You got I think don't you have a Nomad in there as well? No, the Nomad's not here yet. The Nomad's okay. Here. We're gonna bring that down. I got to do that. I got to do a chassis for it. Oh, and I got um, I got two chassis tables in there. The the truck the truck is out right now, but it's coming back. Um, I got my S10 and in, in the Suburban in there. And on the ch the chassis table has the '69 Chevelle. So that you know that's that that chassis is on there. And I'm actually gonna do. I got um Bowler Mark Bowler sent me. A mock-up, a no good case for mock-up. So when I get ready to do, I'm going to set the engine in this week, hopefully, you know, next week I should say. I'm gonna, I got a mock-up LS and a mock-up tranny. I'm going to put that in and then start doing all the bracing, 
it's already boxed the frame is boxed and i'm going to do the bracing and all that and then i'll build the exhaust and i'll be ready to rock yeah what's bowler transmission what's the uh motivation the transmit or the uh engine it's i we're going to do an ls a stock 5.3 probably i don't need nothing oh. for you. it's okay. it's going to be a driver it's going to be a driver it just you know just something you can get in and just boom go a, a, a stock five through the bowler tri, uh, bowler t56 no because chip chip doesn't he wants an automatic it's chip's car oh That's sorry it. okay but yeah. four, uh, four l60 yeah yeah okay. second second of the the newer one i think that's third gen 406 i think but yeah it'll, it's what it'll be i mean nothing it's nothing crazy but it's going to be five inches off the ground 18s and 20s 20 by 12s in the back 18 eights up front so they'll have the right look you know 20 by 12 it's massive yeah i'm doing uh it's got qa1 qa1 control arms gonna have coil over all the way around from qa1 and then uh the back i haven't I'm, i gotta order the wheels it took me a while to get the brake set up you know figured out but i got brakes coming and i'm probably just going to pinch the rails in nothing crazy because i don't i'm not i don't i'm not going to go nuts back half in it you know what i mean I'll, it's going to be basically a stock style suspension but all adjustable i'll build new t i'll build on new bracketry for it and i'll put a nine inch under it but I, very nice yeah real just simple just real simple nothing oh, crazy. A fab nine strange curry i'll do a fab nine and i'm actually I actually have this stuff to design my own Fab Nine. I just got to get the pieces done, so I might do that. If not, I'll do a Fab. I'll do a Fab Nine, or maybe I might even do a Johns. The Johns Industries, the center like we got for yours. That that center is really nice, man. It's really nice. So I might just do another one of those under it. There you go. I got the fixture. I can re. I can put the tubes on and everything. I ain't worried about that. So I can. You yeah, know, they get the. Whatever they feel like. <laughs> <laughs> well you got you got the youtube channel um uh, are you still teaching you still doing that yeah i am but the problem is, is the wu-tang beer virus you know oh, that's, yeah. that's the whole problem we had we're going on uh the third semester of no, of no class so right so what do you do yeah and i'm actually when i get the frame done the auto body class was gonna. I'm gonna. I was gonna get the fl the frame blasted and put an epoxy primer, and then they were gonna go back and clean it up and paint it for me, so we can shoot video on the school doing it. So hopefully we get going at the school, so we can get that piece of it done. Yeah. Cause that would be that would be cool if I can get the school. You know, if I can get the students to do it. Well, there's you know? no reason not to, especially if they're doing paint and body. You gotta wear a mask anyways for paint and body. So yeah, but you know, the, the, the I'm just being is, silly. Don't listen to me. I'm sorry. No, but the school is, is <laughs> being so paranoid. All these schools are being so paranoid about it because they don't want a lawsuit. Everybody yeah. is so ridiculous. Everybody's paranoid. We were supposed to. We were actually supposed to be teaching now. We were supposed to start uh, the first of June, but somebody in the cleaning crew got the Wu-Tang and they shut it down. They canceled the semester and everything again. Yeah, they canceled wow. it. They're, they're, they're supposedly fumigating the building. They're doing a deep clean. You know, I mean, it, it's it's nuts. It's, I mean, I, I, yeah. I see why they're so over the top about it, but the bottom line is I'm of the mindset that you need to get out there and if you get sick, you get sick. You gotta, you gotta get this thing so it burns out. Eventually it's gonna run its course. That's my yeah, thought. yeah. My thought. I remember seeing my uh, my brother with my nieces and, and and nephew. You drop the food on the floor. You got a three second rule. I got a thirty second rule. I take my food and I drop it down there. It makes my immune system strong. Yeah, it's like you know. I try to get my immune <laughs> system strong. So that's I, I don't know if that's the wrong thing to do or say, but yeah, yeah. yeah I think it, it's. I mean, no matter what, it's got to run its course. It just does. You know, I, that's that's how I look at it. So for me, it's just one of those things where I'm not a, I'm not I'm not adhering to, to what they want. <laughs> I don't yeah. care. I'm doing what I gotta do. It hasn't slowed me down any. I'm I still yeah. go I still go to Roxborough. It's a two hour drive, and I stay there all you know, three days out of the week, and then I come back and I do what I gotta do here. And 
No, but but are people around there? Are they when you go inside? Are they wearing masks or? or... Some are, some are, but you know, you got to realize we don't have the population, and Roxbor Roxborough has less population than where I live in North Carolina. You know, I'm oh, a half, okay. I'm a half hour north of Charlotte, and you know, we don't have. I mean, I would say Concord, Kannapolis, seventy thousand people. Oh maybe, wow! Okay, maybe. I di I mean, if it's a hundred, I'd be surprised. And you're right there. Oh wow! Okay. You know what I mean? And, and then yeah. Roxboro has less than that. So, and, and like, you know, we, we don't, well, see, here's the other thing. We don't live on top of each other like they do in New York and LA and Chicago and, and San Francisco. We don't, we don't have apartment buildings like that. You know what I mean? Every, like my block, everybody's on a three acre lot. So we don't, we're not, <laughs> at, we're not living like sardines. <laughs> that's right you know what i mean and you know you know damn well that makes a difference you know it does oh yeah so, right you know i forgot you were that close i mm -hmm. heard this guy i'm on the the opening day, opening day of the power tour on uh was it a couple last last year it was last year and uh no, the year, before, year before was, no because last year cotton picked me up from the air from the the hotel and I went over with the cotton okay, yeah, again yeah, in New Bern, yeah, yeah. and then all of a sudden it's like I get the call from you. Hey, can you get me in? I got the tour <laughs> with me. It's like there's a yeah. Um, yeah. Well, uh, yeah, I'll I'll, I'll uh, set you up. It was uh, good and and, uh, and fun to see you. Yeah. So Power. I have, I have a they, buddy that's uh, huh. out there in North Carolina working for uh, Forge Speed. You know them, Forge Speed LLC. They uh, customize cars, build cars. Where are they? At? All, Where are they? People build Mooresville. Oh yeah, they're they're half hour from me. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Pretty close to him then. If yeah, you... he, he's from Minnesota. He moved out there to work in their shop. Oh, okay. So, if yeah. you, if you look at the way Charlotte's laid out, it's like a wagon wheel. The center is Charlotte, and then the spokes are Concord, Kannapolis, you know, Mooresville. All that. So what I would do is is I'd cut across right there. I'd cut across Concord to Kannapolis, to, um, to Mooresville, I mean. I would cut across. I wouldn't have to go down to Charlotte and come up. I'd just cut across on 150 or 152. So it's, yeah. it's a half hour, yeah. Or I could take I could take Highway 3, the Dale Trail, 3 for Dale. <laughs> uh, yeah, see, 50 is good, but if 52's got traffic, you always want to take the 35. I mean, that's, that's <laughs> what you want to do. What you want to do? You want to roll. But yeah, so, I mean it's it's you know it's it's not bad, it's not it's not a bad drive at all. Yeah. Right. How far are you from the from your school that you were teaching at? It's it's kind of funny because if you look at if you look at Interstate seventy seven, it's it's a uh, Concord, it's a uh, Cornelius, Huntersville, Mooresville. So it's actually I can the same road that I would take to go to the school, I can go a little bit further and go to Mooresville. Basically, oh, there so it's, you <laughs> it's very convenient. It is. You got it made is. in the shade out there. Yeah, if I want, I can jump on the interstate and go to the, the loop, which is 485, run that down, and just go to exit 23 and get off, and I'm at the school. Yeah, I mean, it's it's not hard to, it's not hard to navigate. It's really not. So, we're in. So once this uh, once this rig gets built for for your your friend, your buddy, your cohort. Uh, business partner is I know you've been uh, scheming to drive to SEMA in a rig in a big yeah. truck is is that gonna happen is what's gonna happen with oh, the truck my, I'm gonna get my CDL back I gave up my CDL when I retired but I'm gonna get it back you've been talking about that for years too I know and I never had a reason to but it's official now I got my, it is I got my oh look at you <laughs> Okay. There you go. It's One a car closer. show nationals exclusive, Mike. Yeah, again. Wow, we get we get so lucky with these. I'm gonna do it. Yeah. I'm gonna do it. So yeah, I might. So I that means like... he's gonna be in SEMA this year, right? I'm planning. You, you did not go. You did no, not go I didn't, last year. I didn't go because I had double hernia surgery. Yeah, that's why. That's why. Yeah, that's yeah. why I didn't go. That's a good right. good excuse. Good reason. Yeah, yeah I had, I had a I hernia surgery just December, uh, December 10th. Yeah. 
It's and, funny because I, I was I was invited to SEMA as a personal guest for Joe Coddington, and she got an award that year, and uh, I had to have hernia surgery, so that's why I didn't go. That would have been my first SEMA, but uh, yeah, so I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah, both of mine, both of mine were inward; they weren't out. They yeah. were going in, I, so oh, it sucked. I, I I just had the belly button one, which is a simple one. But yeah, I've like had the that next one day. Too. I, Next day, I went on a car cruise. I'm like pulling myself out of the car, and everyone's like, "What are you doing out here?" <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, I, I did. The, I did the. I had the same. I had the. Uh, I had the belly button one too, and then I had that was like God, 20 years ago, 25 years ago, and then I got this. This these other two, so sucks. It's but probably it's, all your yeah. heavy heavy lifting you're doing, you know. Lifting you, you know, you're right. So now you know, I stuff. can't push cars and all that stuff. So I can't yeah. do it. Yep, there it's you hard. go. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what it so was? It lifted engine blocks by yourself? Yeah, I've done it for years. Transmission, yeah. I, I bare engine blocks, I'd pick up stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. But I've done it. For, I've done that, for, and you know, when I used to work on heavy equipment, I used to pick up heavy stuff then too. The, what is it? It's a fly. I got a a little a baby fly flying around, bastard. So <laughs> <laughs> get it, get it, get it. it's just it's finally catching up to me. You know, I mean, hell, I turned fifty-seven in May. Stop it. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be yeah. fifty-two in July. Yeah. Not looking forward 57, to it. That's <laughs> Catch you got the energy. You got the energy of a twelve-year-old. You're right. I do. I'm too stupid to grow up. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Yeah. Build so Mike, on, I, I don't even know what 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 day it was, um, but you and your buddy came out for for your show on the Power Tour, and um, at one of the venues, my friend Forrest is on stage from Mothers. He's got all this stuff up to, to give away to people. Forrest turns his back. Lou starts just throwing to the to the audience, just throwing all of the mother's polishes and waxes and T-shirts and hats and all sorts of stuff. And by the time he's done, Forrest turns around. It's all gone. It's like, what, what the, what, what, you just got lewd. <laughs> he just comes up and does his thing and, uh, yeah. <laughs> That was when there we that go. was when we did the power tour for the show. That was Jared with me, yeah. Hey Jared, that's it. Yeah. Because I remember the last day, which was uh the last day was at the four wide, you guys were in the burnout contest. Right, right. Yeah. And that's so, that the the, the Z Max is only like twenty minutes from my house. Wow, that's so, nice. straight up the interstate. Yeah. yeah. Z Max Raceway, the four wide drag strip in the not Charlotte, Concord. It's, yeah, it's technically Concord. Even it is, though yeah. the Charlotte Motor Speedway, the, the line is somewhere right by there. Like, it's, okay. it's really close, so they call it Concord. I mean, they call it Charlotte, I mean, but it's in Concord, yeah. Okay. So do, you, do you stay in contact with Jared? Um, yeah, we just where? we just talked yesterday. We talked. Okay. Yeah. What, what is he doing? Because people are asking where, where he is. Go. He's got, um, if you go on Amazon Prime, and type in rad rides it'll come up there's two show there's two episodes done and there's a third they have enough for i think five episodes total right now so they're dropping the third one i think it's next week oh, I think okay. it's, yeah and then uh they're going from there but they're at rad rides shooting some stuff and they did uh 40 47 chevy the four i didn't i didn't know this in 47, Chevy didn't make a two-door coupe. They only made a four-door sedan. And I, and I forget who the owner is, but he's, he's a, he's a big-time car guy. They're taking the, they take the, they took the car and they made it a two-door coupe. Wes it, Rydell. Yes. Rydell. Wes Rydell. And so they're building that for Wes. And one of the episodes, they have a Poteet's DT40. And they've got Poteet's Brookwood that's going to be in, in future episodes. So they started tearing that apart. And then on the uh, the first episode, which was which I thought was really good, was more like history of Troy. You know, because I, I mean, bottom line is if 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 you aren't a car guy, you don't know who Troy is. You know what yeah, I mean? Right, right. He comes to Minnesota, I believe. 
yeah, back yeah, in the 50s, yeah. which was canceled. Yeah. Uh, Rad oh. Rides by Troy Tapan Tapan here? Tapan. Tapan at, yeah. Uh, depending on you had, who depending on who you had. I've heard Trapan yay and I've heard Trapan you know. Yeah. So. But yeah, so that's that's where he's uh that's where he's doing. that's what they're doing. Sounds like growling or revving of a uh, hey guy, let me shut the window. Oh <laughs> uh, okay, they just turned it off. <laughs> well that's the thing is that uh your friend and mine, Lou, uh Michael uh Michael Mulholland from Eaton. We yeah. were at SEMA. It's Michael, Troy, and me at the Eaton booth and across the way. I don't know if he was at Magnaflow or where he was, uh, but Chip Foose is a, there's a line a mile long. Yeah. And no, nobody knows his Troy. It's yeah. like, dude, we got, we got the Mother's Elf, not the El Camino, the the 59 Mother's panel. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah, the panel, yeah. That, that he's, I mean, come on. You know, who he, he's, yeah, I guess you're right. If, you, if you're not a car guy, you don't know who he is. Right. I mean, most people know the cars that they've built, but they don't know who Troy is. And, I mean, stop and think about it. How often have you seen Troy in a picture of one of his cars? Oh, I don't know that I can. That I exactly. can name one. Yeah. Exactly. Maybe you know, it. I mean, everybody, you know, Chip always has a picture with the car, Hollywood Hot Rod. You know, everybody always does that for the most part. Very few shops don't take a picture with the car. You know, I, you never see Troy with the car. Yeah, I, never I can't that. recall ever seeing a picture in any of the magazines of Troy with any of the cars that they built. I can't, I don't recall it hmm. at all. Interesting. Yeah. So nobody, I mean, most, and maybe, maybe that's by design. I don't know. But I do know that Troy, you know, Troy went to Jared and said, let's do something. That's so cool. I, I oh, he went that. to Jared. Very cool. Yes, he went to Jared and said, "Let's do something," that's and that's awesome. how the whole thing started. Uh -huh. Yeah. And, and on Amazon, and, okay, what's it called? Rad Rides. Just go, just go on, just go on Amazon and type in Rad Ride. Cool. I'm gonna do, and it'll pop up. I'm the first a Prime member, so I should be able to watch it. Yeah. I yeah, like and, it, and it's out. free, so you can watch it. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Check that. And, and I before think before you watch I, that, go to Garage Insider TV on YouTube and hit the like yeah. and subscribe button. Way more I've important. Already, I've done that. I didn't do that. It's way more important. Listen. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's way more important. I yeah. got my I, I got my five year old. I don't know if you saw it. I did a video. We were cruising a couple weeks ago, and he started talking, and he's gonna be my new co host. And he goes, "Make sure you hit that bell." I'm like, "What?" He yeah. even knows about that. I'm like, yeah. oh, geez, yeah. five year old. I didn't teach him that. He learned that on his own. Tell yeah. Him. <laughs> you hit the bell, you hit the bell. yeah. I didn't even yeah. know what he was saying at first. I'm like, what? <laughs> but yeah. yeah, it's so funny. He goes, Daddy, they say that in every video. I'm like, they do. Oh, they do. <laughs> so, yeah. well, that so way, when, when, I, when I when I what it is is when you put one up, if they hit the bell. Everybody who hits the bell gets a notice that there's a new video up from it. Okay. It's, it's a notification, but yeah, I, I've I learned it. Too. I, I'm learning a lot about the internet stuff. I really am. Yeah. And, and I got some really cool projects in the works. I just gotta, you know, get the ball rolling so it's it's going good, and then hopefully I can get some help. But I got it. Um, I got a '63 Volvo. I can lay my hands. I'm gonna put a Honda V6 motor in it, make it rear wheel drive. I got a a wagon van that I'm gonna put a two liter a two uh two liter VTEC in. Just some you know. Well, really oh, interesting. Yeah. I'm gonna do a, 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 a VTEC Honda and then a, a V6. Is that I was just gonna say? Is that the yeah, uh, like six out or the two thousand? Out of the Odyssey. Oh, the Odyssey. Okay. It's a V6. It spins the right direction. So I'm gonna turn it ninety degrees, make a bell housing, and put a transmission behind. Put a five speed behind it. What kind? Tremec. Yeah. Behind yeah. of a, a behind a Honda V6. Yeah. What does it spin up to? Spin the thing eight nine grand easy. Holy oh, shit! Okay. Jam a turbo on it. Have fun. And it's going yeah. into a Volvo. Sixty three Volvo. Yeah. All right. Nice. You already have this Volvo. I can lay my hands on it. I can lay my hands on it. Is Did it you? An is, it, what, is it an Amazon? Yes. That's what, the, that's what Jeff, yeah, the one that looks like a street rod. It looks like a, like a street yeah. rod. 
Yeah. That's a that's the one that Jeff Allen customized at uh, SEMA. Uh, yes. Yeah. Th that was on. Yeah. That was Amazon. Sixty three. Was, was that the wagon? No, it was gold. It was gold. It was a okay. gold coupe. And then he raced it out at Optima. Uh, okay. Street Challenge. Yeah. Because I know a few years ago there was a guy who did a like a a green one, and it was really nice. It was in a Ford booth. And he had yeah. he had some Ford motor. That was a really nice car. Yeah, he, did, yeah. he took a Corvette chassis and then obviously had the Corvette engine. Then Ken Langenfelter built the engine for for the car. So the thing was, you know, they could move. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I'm probably going to, I'm going to build my own chassis for it. I'll build a chassis, put everything. I'll do it. Why not? What the hell? Why not? Yeah. You got two frame tables. I mean, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you might as well use at least one of them. We yeah. know where to go, right, Jeff? We know where to go. It's just only Holy on the Lord. other side of the country. <laughs> I can always, I can always build another frame table. I, you know, I've got a welding machine. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> whatever, it's not you a problem. Build anything. Yeah, I can build whatever I need to build. Mill you got the Miller too. welder. You got the right wire for it. Yeah. 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 That's stuff. why Dwayne stops out there. Dwayne, you know, he's heading to his shop all yeah. the time. I guess. No. <laughs> he's been up there three times. I did it, nice. the the Harley that I put the air ride on. That was his bike. Oh that was wow! His bike. Yeah, I did yeah. see the video on that. Yeah, did the yeah, little. That's right. I keep forgetting you're not only a, a car and truck. You're into bikes too. I build everything. Yeah, I actually have a blueprint so I could build a frame fixture for bikes. I have a I have a I have a print. I want to build. I'd like to build a bike frame and build my own bike just because. I mean, I've welded on tons of them. I just never built one for me. But I'd like to build my own frame. That'd be badass. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. You know. What is your uh, what's your opinion of uh, the, the the Jesse James bikes? I don't. It's not my style, so I don't like them. I'm more of I'm more of a bobber guy. You know. I'm more that I, I like I like bobbers. Okay. You know. I, I yeah. just I don't like the I don't like the long bikes. I, I'm not. I'm just not a fan. <laughs> the thing. I'm just not a fan. Okay, I had Easy Rider, Captain America. Yeah, that, that does nothing for me. Okay. <laughs> to me, that's, I mean, the, you get the, yeah, the, the ape hangers and the, the big old twin yeah, one out yeah. there. I yeah. love that. See, like I could, bobber. See, I could, the problem I have, because I had back surgery, you know, when you ride a lot, you get that roll in your back? Yeah. I can't, I can't do it. I can't do it. I can go about a mile and then I got to get the hell off. Oh, but I get if I do a bobber, I can sit. I can sit straight, and I can still have ape hangers, and I'm cool. You know what I mean? And, and you're so, still you're still going to have the ape hangers no matter what. Well, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but you, you know it. what I mean? I can make it work, and I can I can drop the seat so I'm sitting lower, and then, and then I don't have to run the really crazy ape hangers. I can I can get there, but I just I got to build a frame for me. That's it's going to be built for me. But yeah, okay. I'd like. And what's the power plant going to be? Probably like a hundred and three inch Evo. I don't need nothing crazy. Jeez. Oh, okay. So now is the Evo the uh, is the Evo the LS or the three fifty of the of the Harley world? It would be. It, well, I think I think I think Harley just I think they re I think they introduced the Nelson range. I think they left the Evo. I'm not a real hardcore bike guy. Don't quote me on. The, the Evo was the one that they've been running for like the last 10, 12 years, maybe even longer, maybe 20 years. Well, I was going to say 20 because I think now it's like a twin cam or something like that. Well, the it's twin new they put in the Sportsters. That's the twin the twin cam motor. Okay. I think so. Yeah, the, the Evos are the blockheads, and they were just – Right. A re they were right. reliable. Right, and um, that's cool. why I want it. That's why I want yeah. it. Yeah. So that's very interesting. Yeah. And uh, it's going to be a full full dresser, air ride. No, I, I'll do I'll do air on the back, but I'll, that's about it. And I'll oh, probably okay. I'll probably run a wide glide front end on it so it's wider. You know, do some big tanks on it, like fat boy tanks or something. Yeah. Nice. Not not like a boss Haas. Have you guys seen those? No, yeah. no, no. I don't. I don't, I don't, I don't need <laughs> there's, like that. there's a lot of guys who ride those out here. It's pretty crazy. Some of those. Yeah, they, well, and I I heard they're actually balanced out really well. Right. That's what I've heard. I don't. I don't know. I've never rode one. I mean, some of them have like a built 427 on them, and they sound like a crazy. 
Yeah, it's, it's like crazy. nuts. <laughs> yeah. So. That's scary. At the Peterson, they made a Dodge made a couple of them, the Tomahawk. They're the motorcycles with the Viper V10 in it. No way. Wow. Yeah. I didn't know that. It's yeah, they're uh yeah, pretty damn yeah, they're insane, just like those boss hogs. <laughs> or boss hoss, sorry, yeah. Boss hoss. Yeah. Boss. <laughs> but yeah, I, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a bike. I'm gonna do one. I learned how to I learned how to ride on on a chopper that was a rigid frame with a jockey shift. Oh, and yeah, uh, you and call the, it a jockey shift, not a suicide shift. The jockey shifter, that's with a clutch on the floor, and then you got to reach down, take your hand off the bar. And, right, that's the coolest yeah. thing ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was pretty like crazy. That. Oh, it's <laughs> it's pretty damn manly. I that's mean, right. if you're riding a bike, it's let's be honest, it's badass. Yeah. When yeah. I was a kid, it made an impression on me. One of the students in my mom's English class had rode up, and he had it was like an acrylic, whatever it was, with a rose in it on a shifter. And he came over yeah. to the house. I was like, "That's the coolest!" Everyone was like, "Get in the house!" I was like, ah. <laughs> "Yeah." And it was, and yet, yet you basically had to reach down to grab it. You know? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I had I had one friend that had an old cop bike, and the shifter was on the tank. Oh, okay. It, it was it was a mount. That's you know, old. Yeah, it was mounted on the tank. I, I don't know what year it was, but it was old. But yeah. he got the bike and he and he he made it cool, and the shifter was on the tank. Yeah, that's and nuts. That, that was neat. So yeah, Super but cool. I, so I, Evo, I Evo engine and uh, not a bobber, just air right in the back. Yeah, just something 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 I could ride wherever I want. I mean, so, like if I want to ride it to California, I can get on it and ride it. It's not gonna it's not gonna beat me up, you know. I just my daily right now. Eight, Huh? What's your daily right now? Right now, I'm driving a 97 conversion van. Because everything I got is down. <laughs> yeah, everything you're like is the, down. You're like with the, the cobbler. You've got the yeah. worst shoes. Everybody else has yeah. got nice shoes, but you're, yeah. Everything is down. But, but the van runs. So the Suburban is in there in, in this, at the shop, and then the, the S10 is in the shop. You've seen my red S10, that 96 I have. Have you seen that one, the extended cat? I don't think so. Uh, uh-uh. Don's trying to get his his C10 out. I keep on yeah. giving him shit. Well, so dude, like, has 400 and 425,000 on it. Come on! Holy I God. swear to God, that's fantastic. Wow. It's got a four cylinder in. I actually drove it. Okay, now here we go. A few years ago, probably about I don't know, maybe six years ago, seven years ago, I actually drove it to Minnesota. Oh, wow. oh there, there was there was a trade show, like a farming trade show that I went to and um, I drove it up there and the engine was so wore out at the time, the starter had been out for a year. I could push start it in flip flops. Oh, <laughs> 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 I, I, I stopped to get gas and push it past the pumps and jump in and start it. <laughs> I drove it into Minnesota like that. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. I built, I had, I rebuilt the engine. Well, I, I took it to the machine shop. They gave me a long block back, but uh, uh, about, it was like 405. I got the engine, I had the engine rebuilt. So I've got an, I've already put 200,000 on it. Just That's unreal. And a little four cylinder. Dude, I drive the wheels off of it. I drive it. Everything I've got, everything I has, has at least 300,000 on it. Wow. Everything. Yeah. Everything. I drive a lot. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I, because I because I stopped flying a few years ago, so every I drive everywhere. I log about eighty thousand a year. Dang. Last That's year was life. light. Last year was light and it was fifty. <laughs> okay. Yeah. If last Jeff, year was super light for. Yeah, I like to drive. Last year was light if, for if me. Jeff. Yeah. If Jeff drove that many miles, you know how many pictures we'd see of all the. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Jeff needs to do the coffee table book. That's what Jeff needs. To do. Quit screwing yeah. around. Oh, he's got, uh, seriously? He's got it. I got, he's got it. I got one got for you. Yeah, I'll order one for you. Once, uh, once I come out, they come out with the deal again. Otherwise, it's cost prohibitive. Uh, I've got a few. Dwayne is actually on the list. I had to direct. <laughs> I had to text him. I'm like, "Are you serious? You really, dude? Put me on the list." Like, all right, if you're serious, I. So, anyways, yeah. <laughs> There's a few people on the list, so I'll put you on the list because I remember you were one of the first ones. Uh. So yeah, I'll put you on the list. Thank you. You're funny. <laughs> but yeah, I, I got I yeah. 
I'd, re- I, I'd like to do six, Route 66 from Chicago to California. I'd like, I'd really like to do that. So here's my plan is that when the power tour happens, I'm so sick of everybody foreseeing the future with their crystal ball. Oh, if they don't know, it's good. Who knows? All right. When it happens, it, it's supposed to end in uh, Juliet, but it's not. I guess they closed that Chicagoland Speedway. Wherever it ends around there, right? I'm driving to, uh, I think it's Adams and Michigan Avenue. Yeah. Beginning or end of Route 66 in Chicago. Yeah. And yeah. Cotton said he's coming with me and he wants to bring Newbert along for the ride. We're going from uh, from there to St. Louis to Cotton's house. And then I don't know what they're going to do. But from there, I'm driving to Albuquerque and then to a Flagstaff. And then probably the rest of the way to, sa- to here to Santa Monica. You're welcome to come along if you'd like. If I got uh, my suburban done, I, 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 I'll do that. Okay. If I got my suburban done. If I got it done, yeah. I'll do it. Yeah. Yeah, but I, that's my plan go. right now is I'm going to drive that damn thing. Uh, Hell yeah, man. Yeah, hashtag go drive it and go see the damn sights and uh, get some miles because I just want, I want to get on the road. Yeah, I, I think it's just, you know, I think you should, as a car guy, that's like one of those things you just got to do. You yeah. know what I mean? It's it's like going to Bonneville. You just have to do it. It's just all there is to it, you know? No, but, I've been, I haven't been there for speed week. I I've know. been to Bonneville. I've I've been to Bonneville too, but it was not for Speed Week. Yeah, I'm the oh, same. Okay. I'm the same way. But yeah, I'd like to. But you got to go for Speed. I mean, you just got if you're if you're a diehard car guy, I've always believed you have to go. Yeah, you know, 100. Even if you do a day, you don't have to do the whole thing. Just a day, you've done it. Yeah, that's that's. I agree. Deal. Yeah, but I'm not, if I got the suburban done, I'll do it. If I, you know, all right. it's a money thing, but I'll do because I'll shoot it. I'll do video all the way across. Heck Why yeah, not? man. Why not? That'd be cool. It's content, you know. So what's something else besides Bonneville that's on your uh, on your list? You know, I'm gonna be Jeff. I'm gonna be honest with you, man. I need to sit down and redo my bucket list because TV got me in, into just about everything I wanted. Seriously, nice. I, that's I, pretty I, awesome. That that's what TV's done more than anything else for me. You know, like I've always wanted to go to SEMA, the Grand National Roads to show. You know, Detroit. I, all that, all that. So I've gotten to do all that. I mean, so I'm not complaining. I just need. Where, to, where's I, somewhere you want to get into that you haven't been yet? Deep thoughts. Wow. <laughs> well, because I've I've gotten to them. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, right. Yeah. You know, like I, I've done PRI, SEMA. I, I no, went but, to, what, what about someone's private collection or uh, don't. Uh, no one's I, evaded I did, you. I did. I did a Lingenfelder's collection in oh, up wow. in Michigan. Ken Jay is such Leno, a nice guy. Jay Leno knows who I am because a friend of mine, my friend Kevin, who used to work work for Hotchkiss, he met. He he was in Jay's shop, and my name came up. And Jay Leno knows who I am, but we've never we've never like officially met and talked. Two years ago, he was he was he was coming through, and I was in the Ben Pack booth, and I was standing right there, and you know, the sec- security was hurting him like he was the president, and I said, Jay, and I, and I said, Jay, Lou, and he said, Lou Santiago, and they were like, Miss Lona, we gotta go, we gotta go, we gotta go, and they heard him right, but he, he was putting his hand out, I was putting mine out, and then he, yeah, Aww. yeah, yeah, so I mean, I'd like I'd like to go see Jay's shop in Burbank, or wherever it is, I know it's somewhere around Burbank, it's like Burbank. To- I'd yeah, like to go see that. I really would, just because I know he's got cool stuff in there. You know, I mean, he's got. So my he, my friend Jessica York, right when uh, the Jay, Jay Leno's Garage was coming out on CNBC, she interviewed him for for Dish Networks. Yeah. And before she goes up there, she's like, "Uh, hey, hey Jeff, can you uh, would you mind <laughs> drive my my car's not where? Would you drive me up there in your fifty <laughs> five? Well, wait, where are we going? Uh, let me be honest with you. I want you to be my fluffer. Wait, we're going to – seriously, where are we going? This is where we're going. This is what I'm doing. Okay. So yeah. what, what What shirt did I wear, Mike? What shirt? My Hot Rod uh, Power Tour. Hot Rod Power there Staff. There you go. Hot, yes. Or Hot Rod Magazine Staff shirt. Yeah. So we get in there a couple hours beforehand, and we just had carte blanche. The steam room everywhere is unbelievable. You know. Nuts. Yeah. He shows up in the little in the monster Miata, and then uh, they introduce and, and whatnot. I'm minding my own business, sitting way back. 
finally he's he looks over eh, who are you i'm jay i'm like i know who you are you know i'm jay. <laughs> Just like yeah. you don't know <laughs> yeah and late and 45 minutes later it's like oh shit we and i don't even know what we talked about but it was cars and yeah. it's like you, you guys should probably start shooting they shot and then yeah at one point he was like oh so what do you got in your 55 i'm like all right i can die happy he asked me well, what kind of engine i've got in the 55 it's he knows cars. He's the nicest guy. Uh, yeah, I give yes. him a lot of credit. Yeah, he's he's a car guy, man. He's he's the legit. Oh, through and through. Yeah. And yeah. like you said, he's got he's got all these different things up there. One of them is the it's a, he's got the steamer with all the, the the Stanley steamers. Yeah. But he's also got not a it's it's this monster machine. I don't even know what it does, but they had to move it from somewhere. And <laughs> it's just uh yeah, he's got a super cool workshop up there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like I, I went to the bit the uh was it the Ford Museum in in uh, Dearborn that big one? I haven't Where, been there yet. Yeah, the, the, I, I've been there. I, I mean, I, there's a lot of stuff that I've gotten to do because of TV that I've always wanted to do. So now I gotta I gotta really sit down and think about what's. Have left. you been to you've been to Milford Rooming Grounds? No, I have not. Aha! Uh -huh. I have not, but I but I don't know anybody that could even get me in there. You know what I mean? I used to. Yeah, see that. Some of the yeah. stuff I know I just won't, I know I wouldn't be able to do. So like Milford, I know. But I did go to Eaton's Proving Grounds up in Michigan. Oh, very cool. Yeah, Eaton's got Eaton's got a thing up there where they they had like a rally course and a bunch of other stuff. Yeah, where they, they, they got like a four-wheel drive park and then they had asphalt. I, I got to go to that. That's yeah. what's amazing to me is, dude, Eaton is, they've got their fingers in like everything. everything. I, yeah, there's everything. everything. Yeah. 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 I, I mean, and they're good. Yeah, they're, they're good, good at it. The military, yeah. In the military, we, I've worked on stuff that was eaten. Yeah, they, they're in everything. It's crazy. But they got good yeah. shit. You know, exactly. Like that, dude, that true track that, that we're going to put in your rear end, that thing's, that's a nice piece. It's all scalloped and everything. It's gorgeous. And what did what did he say? Did it turn out to be 35 spline axles? It's 35. They are. Okay. Yeah, I was like, 31 will be fine. He goes like, no, 35, 35, yeah. okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and, I mean, realistically, for the money, it's not much more, so you just do it. Yeah. You know, you just do it. I got to get a – I do need to get the hardware. I got to call ARP and get the hardware. But I, I got the ring and pinion. We got the stuff. I had the steel for the tubes. I just need to get – I just need to get off my ass in order to housing it, and then I'm ready to rock. Nice. I did a stand up for him already, so that's that um that'll come out next week to stand up. You know, do a little did a little ditty on him. And it's great you got the uh, an editor and a shooter. Yeah, man. Yeah. I mean that's what I, I don't know. I'm not an editor at all. Like I'll give you a stand up and I'll <clears throat> tell you yeah. what you want to know and get you from A to B, but uh editing and lighting and down eh, Dude, not yeah. my thing. Uh, I know, yeah. I know, I know a bit about the lighting. I've just because of being in TV so much, so long, I should say. Yeah, um, I know about it, but it's not my thing, and I don't want to. Uh, right. <laughs> right. How, how many years, Lou? How many years is uh, car fix for you? I don't even know. We did eight seasons. We did eight seasons of car fix, and then I did all three car builds, ten episodes, and then before that, I did two seasons of muscle car. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. It sounds like someone playing the drums or something. <laughs> it's those uh, silly uh, five-liter Mustang Fords. There's the Kenworth. I'm gonna stretch. Nice. Okay. So are you do you do everything like you're repainting, or are you keeping the same color? I do not paint. Okay. I don't paint. I don't have um. I don't have the feel. You know, to see if it's straight. I, I don't have the feel. I've tried. I know. I understand the process. I know the process for body work, but I think you know. I think my hands are pretty fouled up from working on equipment in the cold and all that. I just. I can't run my. I, I, I can't. I can't run my hand over. Oh, it's low here. You know. I, I can't do it. I, I've tried, and it, it's funny because guys that guys that are body guys, good ones. You know. I I tell people Brent, the guy that used to help me at Muscle Car, Brent. Brent was. Brent's a body guy, and, and I'll never forget this. And Jared's the same damn way. We were uh, we were doing that '67 Le Mans, and 
I had to I had to stand right there and I had the box, the hoods in the brand new hoods in the box. I cut it. Brent comes over. We literally take the hood, put it on the stand. That was it. Like half a step. That hood's fucked up. I'm like, what? <laughs> right there, right there. It's low. I'm like, what? I'm running to my hand. I'm like, no, no, it's not. He said, I'll be right back. You got a, you got a cup of water poured it on, it and you can see the ripple in it. Like, yeah. You know, wow. and, it was a, and, and it's it, it's got the 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 e coating on it, so it's basically flat black. And he's like, "Oh, it's right here." Like, yeah. it was nuts. But but the dude, he's a body guy. You know what yeah. I mean? That's what he does, and he's damn good at it. So those I, what, I, I don't have yeah. that. Oh, that's and, what I went to school here. for. And you you when you start doing it for a while, you do start feeling stuff like that. And I could do. I was good at that too, but uh, yeah. just kept getting yeah. laid off. I'm no, I'm no, I'm no good at it. I, I, I mean, I, I've had an engine drop on this hand. I just, I'm no, I think my hands are just messed up. I can't yeah. feel it. But uh, right. this is something else that I got. Dun, dun, oh, got... Dun! Dun! Oh. What? That's a not a falcon. No. No. What is it? It's, it's your European. No. That is a sixty-three Studebaker Lark. Studebaker. Oh! Okay. Yeah, I'm sitting there going, ah. yes. Studebaker. Studebaker Lark, baby. What's the story on that? It's mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? There you go. You, That's a start. Do you, you lower it? <laughs> yeah. 24s? Yeah. I'll, probably do, I'll probably do 19s on the back. Like 19s on the back and a, and a Honda power plant? No. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not in that I'll one. Do, Come on. I'd do an LS in it. Oh, there we go. Oh, I'd do an go. LS with a six speed. I think that'd be fun. I'm looking for the car would probably move. Yeah, the sixty three Lark. Yeah, yeah. Autocross it. <laughs> I thought I had pictures Jeff's of Jeff's answer for everything. Autocross it. That's it. <laughs> you can really autocross it, but you can drive it anywhere you want, you know? It's true. Yeah. You can do that. I'm looking for the uh I got a picture of basically the shop when I was first starting out. Was this... I remember seeing pictures. It's, yeah, large. yeah there's, there's a couple. There it is. Yeah, there it is. This was when I was first starting out. Wow, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, said. it's a good size shop. It really is. And then the the... That building, the, it's like here's it's like here's the hundred thousand square foot. My shop is like this, it's tied to it. So I just go through the door and I'm in the big one. So I got some stuff, you know, a couple cars in there that, that are stored in the big shop. But yeah, I can drive around it and everything. <laughs> <laughs> so the work you're doing for this this guy is is his plan to keep all the things that you're building, or is he gonna sell? No, he's, he's he's he's. He's talking about selling. He's sell, he's got a, a a pretty good sized collection. He um he's gotten stuff that he just likes. You know, it might be a four door, it might be a two door. It could be whatever. If 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 it trips his trigger at that moment, he's that's what he gets. So he uh some of it though he's just gonna get rid of. He's he's just you know he's like ah I don't know why I bought it. So I'm gonna straighten <laughs> out some stuff for him. You know, like there's a there's a '63 Tiber that's really nice. But it, it just needs it needs to be loved on. It runs. So what I'm thinking about doing is putting the EFI on it and then turn around and do uh you know, just break it all the way around, clean it up, and let it go. You know, just so you can sell it, something like that. Because it it'd be good tech, you know. It's it's got a that three ninety in it if I'm not mistaken. There you go. Yeah. <clears throat> you know? But it runs robotic fuel injection, four wheel right. discs. Do an intake. Wire it up. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Nothing crazy. Just make it a really nice, a nice driver. And and he can drive it a while. And if he wants to sell it, he can. That's what I'm thinking about doing, you know, with that one. He's got a couple like that. He's got a 31 Chrysler four-door sedan that's all rusted out. I mean, I want to cut that in half and make it an extended cab pickup. Eliminate, oh. eliminate the back doors. Put it together. You know what I mean? Make it an extended cab pickup. And it's a Chrysler. It's got the face. It's rotted out bad. So 
it, it's it's not like it's a pristine car. I got it. It needs floors about six inches from the bottom. The doors are rotted out. So, I mean, what, what does it matter what I do with it? You know, what does it matter? But it's got the fenders. Put the fenders on it. You know, just make it cool. And drive the uh, snot out of it. Maybe put a big block car in it. So you've got all these plans, but it's just you, you doing it. Uh, you're you gonna get a co-host. You're gonna get anybody, any anybody I else to like, work I, with you. When it starts making money, I would like to get help. Right now, it's not making any money. On, okay. that, honestly, that's the thing. It's not making any. I can't afford to pay anybody. So, but I'd like to. I would like to get it to where we can build, where I can get some people. You know, and and it'll happen. It's just you know, I got to get it there. Yeah. Once I get it there, it'll be fine. Yeah. Very but cool. I mean, yeah, because yeah. you've got the ideas, and I'm curious to see them come to fruition. Yeah, I'd it's like, like I want to know when. When can I watch this stuff? Yeah. I mean, you know, it's and on it's, his YouTube it's, channel. You're gonna be able yeah. to. <laughs> well, I know yeah, exactly. Well, and the thing is, it's it's good tech. You know, what I mean, like I would have to make the roof insert for that 31 Chrysler because it's all wood. I can make all the, I can take out all the wood and make it out of metal. So, I mean, it's good tech. It, to me, it doesn't matter what I build as long as I'm putting out good information. You know, that to me, that's what's really important, quite honestly, guys. I mean, if, if I'm not putting out good info, what's the sense? That's how I look at it. So That's a good way to look at it, yeah. Yeah, because I, I, you know, every day a kid wakes up and wants to change the intake manifold on his car. That simple. Every day, you know, it's just, they may not have, they may not have someone in their family that could teach him that. They may not have any friends that could do that. So he's got to go somewhere to get it. And the internet's become that source. In my class, I got a guy, he's a 40 year old physician's assistant and he loves cars, but nobody in his family was ever a car guy, right? And he, and you know, he makes good money and he found me, he doesn't live far from me, he found me before. And I actually told him about the class. But he came to me and he's like, Luke, you know, can you build me a transmission? As I, and I looked and I said, no. And he goes, why not? I said, because you're going to build it. I'll take it apart. I'll show you all the pieces. We'll lay it out. We'll clean it. And then I'll watch you put it together. So he built his first transmission. Oh, that's badass. Really? Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. That's what I did. So now... Now his, 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 he's got a 66, it's actually a 300 Malibu, the postcard, the sedan. It's, it's, so he's got, that's what he's got. We're putting 335, 35, 18s on the back with, what's up front? Um, 335s, that's massive. Yeah, they're, I think they come out like 13 inch wide. I think it comes out. Good Lord. We had to get, we had to get 12 inch wide wheels. He bought billet specialty wheels. And it, we're running an 18.7 up front. I don't remember what the size is, but it's it's like a 225 or something. It's not. And then we're so we're gonna mini tub the back of the car. He's he he's got a centerpiece like you got for the you know for the for for the rear end. So we'll build the rear end. And dude, he had to redo the whole floor. So what we did, he he registered in the class, and I showed him how to weld, and I showed him how how I wanted him to take the floor out. He drilled out all the spot wells. He cut it out in sections, like I told him, because it would be easier. And then he welded the damn floor and never welded before in his life. Welded the floor. Wow. That's very cool. That's awesome. Yeah. So, and I mean. what a sense of accomplishment. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and that, to me, that's the thing. I mean, it, it, what's the sense, what's the sense in, in building a car that you're not going to drive? What's the sense in building it in, in having someone else build your car because if it breaks down and you drive it all the time you can't fix it i mean to me it's just you, you learn how to do it I, I i'd much rather teach a guy how to weld you know build a transmission build a rear end you know learn how to do it what's it what's the problem do it you know you don't need to go to school to learn how to do it just fucking learn how to do it circle you you can learn you can learn stuff from a bad mechanic you know what I mean? You can learn what not to do. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah. You know? So that that's that's my deal. I'd rather do that and be and be good at it. And and let people show people how to do it. I had a guy I had a guy a couple years ago in Canada come to me. He's like, Lou, fifty five years old, and I know you always say that if you want to build a car, you gotta learn how to weld. 
I sold my marketing company. I went back to school. I got my welding certificate. I do high structural steel, but I have a chassis table in my shop and I'm building my own, cha I'm building my own chassis. Wow. That's wow. badass. That and to motivated. Me, to me, that's the, the best thing. Because you gotta, because see the way I see it, if say you want me to build you a front end, right, Jeff, for your 55, which I'm gonna build some, some anyway, but I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna, you want me to build it. Well, you have an idea of what you want in your head and, and how you want it to look, what stance and all that. But at the end of the day, if even though I'm gonna, even though I will try to give you exactly what you want, because you know, because that's just the way I do it. You're still gonna get a lot of stuff that I think is the way to do it. You know what I mean? It's just, it's just the way it is. It's just the way it is. I may think that it needs to be an inch lower so the car looks better than you want, than what you want. And I'll tell you, man, I, I made it a little bit lower because I just think it would be cooler. And, and realistically, it's your car, and I understand that. But I'm still gonna do it, and everybody does it. <laughs> oh, everybody, everybody does that. They put their own little spin on it, and it's just the way it is. But if you know, if you know how to weld and you know how to do it, when you say, "Ah, oh, you know, I think I'm making an inch lower," you're not gonna be upset at anybody because you get exactly what you want. You're not getting my interpretation of what you want. And to me, I think that's what makes car building. It's your car. It's your interpretation, not my interpretation of your car. So that's that's why I think everybody should learn how to weld. I think it's worth it. So learn how to weld, damn it. <laughs> He's going to at SEMA. It's He's true. Going to at SEMA. Go. Dwayne's going to show him how. <laughs> and we're going to record true. it. We'll be at the Miller Welding booth. Who's on by? Yeah. Bogey's going to be there. Maybe we'll get you there. We'll have like a whole bunch of people just show up at the same time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and I mean, and, and I've been, in, you know, I've gone in, I actually, Lincoln, Canada, when uh, there was a show I would do up in Canada a few years ago, Lincoln, Canada would have me come up and I'd just spend a day in their booth welding. Huh. Just welding, you know, welding with people, teach, you know, teaching them how to weld. Yeah. I don't care. I don't mind doing it. I enjoy it. I enjoy welding. Yeah, well, I'm looking forward to learning. I don't know anything about it. Dude, you got to learn, man. Yep. Because see, here's the thing. Once you learn, to me, I learned how to build front ends from a guy, you know, with with a plumb bobs, a tape measure, and string, you know? And, and once you learn how everything works and what it's supposed to do, you can figure out the numbers to get all the, to get everything right. And then it's, it's game on after that. <laughs> you can go crazy. You can build whatever you want. You know, I mean, you learn, you get good at it. You're building your own control arms. You can build a one inch drop into your control arms and no one will ever know. You know, and you got tubular arms. It's, it's just stuff like that. You can do all of that, you know. So where did you learn? What do you mean you learn with a plumb bob and a, and, and a, and a, and a roll of tape? What, what it is, you learn from working on everything. Well, who taught you? When, when did you learn this? I worked. I worked in a in a in this front end shop for a while, and the guy and there was four bays. There was four bay. They were pit. The the pit ran across the back of the shop, so you drove on these two ramps. Oh, okay. Then, so I learned how to do front ends. Learned how to rebuild them, align them, everything. That's that's what I learned. That's how I learned front ends. And then I took that basic knowledge and applied it once I learned how to weld into building what i knew interesting very cool yeah. that's yeah. how i learned it and see once once you start once i started doing once i started doing that then i was able to take the front end alignment specs you know like from a vet and you know you, you built you have so much anti-dive angle on the spindle okay well a vet has a little bit more anti-dive because they, they it's going to go fast it's going to handle a little bit different so i would get i would measure out all those numbers and then take those numbers and apply those numbers into a front end that i built so instead of having say like a 55 chevy all the numbers from a 55 
I would build a front end that fits a 55, but has all the numbers from a vet. So it handles a lot better. Yeah. You, just, you take that information because because the basic setup is the same. It's the numbers that are different. So I would I would copy all these numbers down when I would do the alignment, and then I would save them, and then I would apply them whatever I was building. Just, Very cool, man. Yeah. I mean, the information's out there. You just got to figure out how to get it. Once you get it, you've got it. That's like, you know, I... I'm not a I'm not a computer programmer by any stretch of the imagination, but I got tired of buying brackets that didn't fit. So I got a cheap Mastercam program years ago and learned how to design my own brackets. So I do all my own laser cut brackets now. I go to I go to this place called Laughlin Fabrication. They have they have a well they got they had four. They got two lasers now. They got rid of two and got a really nice one. But I have two lasers. But um, they 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 do my brackets for me. I, I, I email them the files. They plug it in, make sure everything's right, and then they cut them for me. They call me when I'm done. <laughs> yeah. Now explain that. That sounds funny. They got rid of two. They had four lasers. They got rid of two. Got one really nice one. Yeah, they got a really nice one, and they kept an old one. So they have two. But this thing is like Mac Daddy fast. I mean, like it. Yeah. Yeah, and they no, run. They, the, you, you take a big ass hunk of metal, you put the program in, and just G -G 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 cuts out these brackets. Wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's. Very I mean, cool. cool. You just you just got to learn. I mean, you just once you learn how to do it, it's easy to do. You just got to learn how to do it, and it's and it's getting easier. Like the 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 software now is so powerful. There's um. SolidWorks, Fusion 360. And Gibbs Cam, those are the ones where like you like you could build an entire front end in the computer, and then you could put the mouse on the spindle, and, and you know you put on the spindle and you move the mouse up and, and the spindle will move up and down, the spindle will move up and down and you'll see the control arms working. Yeah, you can turn it so like it's making a right hand turn, and you can see if there's any clearance issues because you can build a framework. You like you you've seen it where they had these pictures like the whole frame in the computer. That's one that's like a solid works or, or wow. Gibbs or Fusion. And you can work all of that. You can literally build it in a computer and and do probably ninety nine percent of your R and D work and then build the frame and it's ninety nine percent sure it's gonna work. You know? That's amazing. You can figure everything out in there. That's yeah. my next thing. Technology. My next thing is learning how to do that. Because that takes all the R that takes all my R and D out. But my R and D is still making templates, making it in steel, and then seeing if it works. And then, because it's just me, you know, it's just me in the shop. But if I can do that, if I can teach myself that. Whoo! It's game on. <laughs> it's game on, then, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm working on that next. Nice. Well, it is game on for you. And it's Garage Insider TV on YouTube. Yes. Yeah. Hit the bell, like, subscribe, all that stuff. And when's your the next video going to drop? Next week. Next week, okay. we'll drop. We'll drop one next week for sure. We got like three in the can. Yeah, and I got um. Learn from Lou. That's what you're gonna do. We've got That's the QA one. Right. We've got QA one. A little stand up for QA one. A stand the stand up for Eaton. And well, we would have the we we have a big chunk of the Chevelle, but I want to get the engine in before I before we drop the Chevelle. We got we got welding the boxing plates. And uh, and all that, but I want to get the, I want to get the engine in and build the transmission cross member before I drop the Chevelle because then I'm gonna do all the bracing in it. So that that'll be that'll probably be in another week. That'll probably be in another nice. week. I was I got the I got the case from Bowler, so I'm gonna do the, you know so I'll get all that ready. This I'll get all that ready next week, and then if I can get it stabbed in, I'll get it stabbed in, and we'll do those last standups, and then it'll be the bracing because I've got the tubing bender. And uh, I'm going to mount my tubing bender to the frame table so I don't have to go far. It's right there, and I can start doing all that. But I want to do a big piece on doing on doing the, the, the tubing. So I want to have the engine in and all that before I do it. Yeah. And we'll be rocking. Yeah. So you're on Instagram. Uh, Instagram Insider. is Garage Insider. Yeah. Is it, it's Garage Insider, Garage I think. Insider. I think it's Garage Insider TV. I'll look real quick, so I'll tell you yeah. the 
I know some of it was TV, and I don't know. Yeah, it was a couple of the TV because I could because we'll see like on YouTube we had actually I had tried it two other times and it was Garage Insider it was Garage Insider, and then we added the TV because I didn't want to I didn't want to do a full na a full blown name change, you know what I mean? Right. right. So yeah, on Instagram is Garage Insider. Yeah. Okay, there it is. Yeah, I see that. Yeah. Yep. I'm and I got my. Give I got a follow my on Instagram. It's in my 75th anniversary. Uh, gentleman Jack bottle for the CBs. The CBs. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's what that was. But yeah. And I'd like to get the other thing I want to do is I'd like to get a. I want to I want to build a couple of English wheels, probably two or three of them. And get someone who's ridiculously good at sheet metal work, and have us, and maybe do a do like a lesson on rolling out some stuff. Cause I, I know a couple of guys around here that are stupid good at making panels, and nobody knows who they are. You know, that'd what I mean? be really cool. Yeah, you know, give give like a basic class, like a twenty minute class on what you're looking at, how you're doing it, that kind of deal. I think that would be really neat. How not to yeah. get your thumbs in there. Right, right, right. I think that'd be really neat. And then that that would be really cool. You know, just do, I want to do some stuff like that too, you know? Because I'm not a sheet metal guy. I've never, I never had the tools to do it. So I'm going to learn sheet metal real soon. Because I got, um, I actually have a 76 Oldsmo, uh, Cutlass, an Oldsmobile. That I got to redo the window openings on front and back, and and do some patch panels, and I mean I've helped Jared do it, but I've never done it on my own. So I'm gonna I'm gonna get a shrink a stretcher and go at it, you know. Excellent. Yeah. I can't wait to watch it. I mean I know thanks I can for, do it. Uh, Check it out. Yeah. Thanks for coming on uh on Car Show National with us, man. Garage Insider on and YouTube you and Instagram. Lou, we, we always to, appreciate it. Hope to see you at SEMA, too. Yeah, I'll Hopefully be there. We can hook up. We'll hook up. We'll make it happen. All right? All right, Thank guys, you. later. Thanks for joining. We're no honored. problem. Anytime. <laughs> there you go.